Hi, my name is Shannon Gillespie, and today on Growing Women's Wrestling, we have three superstars of women's wrestling pioneers, if you will. They're going to give you a little bit of their story, and then we're going to do a quick interview, and so you can get some insight on how to grow women's wrestling and how to be basically in the sport of women's wrestling. First, we have Ali Samara, and they have Jenna Burkett and Aaron Cladjo. We'll first start with Ali. Hi, um, I'm Ali Samara Zaiko. Uh, I'm originally from Hawaii. I, that's where I started my wrestling career um, in high school at Kailo High School. Uh, got got interested in continue wrestling after my um, my uh, tournaments at Fargo Body Bar. I first attended college at Northern Michigan University. Um, then transferred to Jamestown College. Now it's called University of Jamestown. A uh, University of Jamestown. Uh, for a short while and then after went to the OTC wrestled there uh did pretty good uh all-american from cadet all the way to senior then wrestled for the army for a little bit then I started coaching after my wrestling career first at Nassau Community College which is in Long Island New York and then moved to as a assistant coach at uh, New Jersey City University, which they're going to start their first season this fall. So that's pretty exciting because uh, Coach Elena Pierce is the head coach, and hopefully they do well. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't keep going with the assistant role. I had to take some obligations active duty side as I commissioned just recently. So um, now I'm pursuing a career in active duty Army. Next, we have Jenna Burkett. Hi, my name is Jenna Burkett. I'm part of the Army World Class Athlete Program. <coughs> I started wrestling when I was six years old, uh, progressed through my you know, high school in Long Island, New York. Uh, when I was 15, I moved to Northern Michigan and was part of the United States Olympic Education Center. From there, I moved to Colorado and was part of the resident program there at the Olympic Training Center. So I did four years there. Uh, and that's where I heard about the Army World Class Athlete Program. So I decided to enlist. So now I'm a sergeant in the Army and I still wrestle for WCAP. And I'm a three time World Team member. Aaron Claudio is up next. Hi, I'm Aaron Claudio from Richmond, Vermont originally. I started wrestling when I was in seventh grade. Uh, I fell in love with it. Um, from there, I wrestled boys and until eighth grade, I started wrestling some girl tournaments. Um, and then when I was a sophomore in high school, I actually met Shannon Gillespie, and I ended my sophomore year, high school year, by moving out to Northern Michigan and starting to train there, and he was my main coach there for a few years with Tony DeAnda, and then after that, I moved to Colorado Springs for ooh, eight years or so, quite a while, and I trained out there for a long time. Um, Terry Steiner, for, a lot, for mainly a lot of the few years, first few years, and then I went to uh, Tom, coach uh, Tomio, Aaron Tomio. She uh, coached me for a long time after that, and then Ike Anderson uh, for the ending of my career. And then uh, for the last year in 2018, I moved back to Vermont, and I wrestled my last year there um, training at Norwich University, which I started doing volunteer coaching, and I still participate with that. And I also coach Alyssa, Alyssa Lampy. Before we go into the questions, I forgot to give my short self, self short intro. My name actually is Shannon Gillespie and I coached all of these women at the United States Olympic Education Center, which was on the campus of Northern Michigan University. There are a couple of initials that you may or may not know. So the USOEC stands for the United States Olympic Education Center and the OTC, also known as the USOTC, although I think they put a P in there now, is the United States Olympic Training Center. And I think they also added the Paralympians as well. So. Most of these ladies here have trained there and they also trained at the United States Olympic Education Center. Currently, I'm a high school coach. I coach boys and girls at Homewood Flossmoor High School. And here is the breaking news. Just recently, I uh, became not named yet, but probably pretty soon, I'll be the recruiting coordinator for Lincoln College, which is in Illinois. So right now in Illinois, what we're trying to do is get the, the state sanction for a girls high school wrestling. And this is an abandoned opportunity for me to get a little more involved on the women's side of wrestling to help uh, get girls sanctioned wrestling in Illinois. So the first question will be for Jenna. It's a three part question. 
what was it like to travel <laughs> and compete <laughs> in the Youth Olympic Games, Junior Worlds, and Senior Worlds? Uh, I would say that the level of competition isn't all that different. Uh, the Youth Olympics was my first real exposure to that type of scene, like the more official mats and, uh, you know, the Olympic Village and just kind of how that went. Uh, I would say it was just different traveling. You know, I was 15 when I went to the Youth Olympics versus, you know, 23 and, and under 21 when I went to Juniors and Senior Worlds. Um, Overall, great experiences at all those different places. Uh, and the cool thing about it is some of the same people that I wrestled at the Youth Olympic Games, I still compete with at the senior level. So it's still cool to still see them around. So just as a follow up to that question, because many people may want to do some of the things that you did, what were the countries that you went to that the Youth Olympic Games as an example, and then Junior Worlds and then Senior Worlds, what were those countries like? Because these could be opportunities for young people like yourself and perhaps even younger, because now I think they have something called the 15 and under U15 World Championships. Yeah. I mean, I feel very fortunate. You know, I've been to like over 26 or some odd countries and they're all very uniquely different and they all bring something to the table. But the biggest thing is that it's just not like the United States. And so that exposure is crucial, uh, especially when I was younger, just seeing how other countries lived, seeing how they train, seeing like that dynamic. Uh, those were all really a lot of things that I was paying attention to, especially because I would see the older girls and wherever country they were from, you know, I would be looking to see what they were doing so that I could implement it. Uh, I think that's something that you taught early on was paying attention to what these other countries, how they are warming up, some of their drills, you know, some of the warm up <laughs> drills that I learned from you at Northern Michigan that you learned from probably Japan or some odd country, you know, I still, I implement that at WCAP. So uh, it's very important. Um, and it's, it's different, but it's the same. That's the cool thing about wrestling, so. To piggyback on what you said and to give myself a self-promotion, I'll actually run two <laughs> IG uh, Instagram <laughs> accounts right now. One of them is at Women Wrestle 2. And I just basically put up a lot of highlights and information on girls and women's wrestling. And Coach Shannon Talks, that one is a little more on the technical side. And, and it has some more, uh, I guess, coaching information as well. So if anyone is interested in that, IG at Women Wrestle 2. IG Coach Shannon talks. Aaron, this question is for you. And this, <laughs> you maybe alluded to this in the intro, but can, can you give an explanation of when and why you started wrestling? Um, yes, <laughs> I started wrestling in seventh grade because um, when I was in uh, recess, a kid threw a ball at me and so I decked him. And so I got in trouble, I'd go to the principal's office and the principal could tell I wasn't like a bad kid because I didn't have like, you know, wasn't like into trouble all the time. So he's like, you need to join a sport because this, is, this isn't this is going to be a regular thing. So I saw a flyer for uh, like middle, uh, for like youth wrestling. And so I went and tried out and like that, the rest was history because I just fell in love with it right away. I couldn't get enough of wrestling. I thought it was awesome. Fabulous. Uh, Allie, this question is for you. Um... What was your Pan Am experience like and what country did you go to? Uh, so my Pan Am experience, I mean, it was uh, definitely something that I very, like I enjoyed a lot, especially in like that age setting when you're just a junior and you're just starting to see where you are in your, in your um, level of wrestling, if you're going to peak anytime soon, if you're growing, if and it's a good indicator when you're just going to a, um, a competition like that um, because it's not entirely like the whole world. It's just the, the Americas. So it was just a good motivation booster and definitely took a lot of uh, experience back home with me. Um, on the cultural wise, I, I very like I enjoyed uh, Chile that's where we went Santiago Chile back in 2013 and it was a fun experience and like I don't know like a lick of Spanish but like it was I mean it was very interesting because you know like we expect like other foreigners to come and talk our, 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 our language so it's it's definitely a cool experience and a confusing experience too when you just don't know how how the dialect how the culture is but it does make you more aware and that, i think that falls on that last question like what jenna had answered you kind of just pick 
you just an analyze just the different trends and the different ways they conduct themselves. So yeah. So for people that may be wanting to know what Pan Am stands for, it stands for Pan American and Pan American is basically from Canada all the way down to Chile, actually. Chile and Argentina are kind of on the, what is that, the eastern coast of uh, South America. Yes. And every every part of the world has like a continental championships and the Pan American championships is our continental championship. Europeans, theirs is called the Euros. And then I think there's something called Oceania. And then I think there's an African championships too. And typically every year there's there's one of those championships. Jenna, this question is for you. And if you guys want to add to it, you can do that as well. Um, where is it? What will it take for the USA to dominate women's wrestling? Big question for me. It is. <laughs> Thanks for leaving that one for me. Um, you know, I was talking about this a little bit with uh, Medina. She's one of the coaches now for the Olympic Training Center and whatnot. And it's a loaded question because it's something that we haven't been able to do for pretty much ever, you know, in our existence of, of wrestling since we've been in the, in the, in the games. Um, you know, her and I focused a lot about, you know, team cohesion and building that from a young age. I think that was a topic that stuck out to us because we paid attention to as we become seniors, we don't all work together that like building blocks of really trying to dominate but in a team setting is really important. I think we lose track a little bit and become so focused individually that, and it's a selfish sport because it's individual, but I think if we focus a lot more on the team, it would help us. But that was only like a, one part of that. And then the other part is doing freestyle and doing it from a young age. You know, we're at such a disadvantage where we start wrestling folk style and all these other countries are doing freestyle much earlier on in, in their careers. And so that's probably the biggest thing. And that's the thing I'll hit on the most is that, you know, we've got to get this experience. We've got to do freestyle um, and we got to just be comfortable in those positions. A lot of times I think we see younger athletes and they're very unfamiliar in the freestyle setting of parterre and throws. And it really translates to their, to them being uncomfortable on the mat. So for me, I would say that's the most important thing of how we dominate the other countries. So I'll add to that, just to give a little, a little bit of perspective. So in the USA right now in high school, we have something like around 21,000 to 22,000 high school girl wrestlers. And that's important because it's, it's more than it was when I started uh, on the female side of wrestling. But as a statistical anomaly, we're at the bottom of the totem pole in terms of girls participation in high school sports. Like I think track and field is number one and there's something like 400,000 and I think swimming is up there and they're up above 200,000 and I think volleyball is up there and they're like 150,000 or so. So to put it into perspective, we've got roughly 20,000 high school girl wrestlers wrestling and then Jenna alluded to folk style and freestyle. Some parents, athletes and students and coaches may be aware that the Olympic style is freestyle and you know, I'd say 99% of the girl wrestlers in high school right now are doing folk style and many of them when they go to college they have to transition to freestyle you ladies are all different you did the transition much earlier but a lot of high school gals uh, like the girls on my team as an example they have no idea what freestyle is they've never even seen it before because for many of them this is the first time that they've ever uh, been introduced to wrestling on that note Aaron this question is for you why do you believe high school female wrestling is less popular than high school female track and field volleyball, basketball, and swimming. And those are the sports where they have the largest participation number <laughs> in high school. Um, I believe, uh, you know, I wanna kinda actually piggyback on what Jenna said that actually we're kind of just behind as a country a little bit. You know, we'll, women's wrestling is, you know, we'll say behind the curve just between wrestling in general, but wrestling rough folk style of the United States is puts us at a huge disadvantage. It puts us way behind because we lose uh, after that either high school or college se season for guys or girls, there's a huge large participants that just are done. And they don't even get to, uh, to touch their potential in the freestyle division. So I think like then that, you know, whether they had good potential or not, but bettering the wrestlers that are there, you know, is always numbers what we want. And I think that's a big, big reason why our country is behind and, you know, going to, against in the Olympics. But I think just right now, I think women's wrestling is growing. 
you know, and I think it is growing actually at a, at a good pace. It is going to keep growing faster and faster, but um, I think we are on the rise and I think it is going in a great direction because I do see more programs opening up and there's more women that wanting to be involved, younger girls. Let me read you some statistics. I just looked this up the other day because I'm, you know, I'm nutty like that. You're you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Shannon. 10 most popular girls programs. Track and field, these are numbers, participants, 488,000. Volleyball, 452,000. Basketball, 399,000. Soccer, 394,000. Softball, 362,000. Those are like the top five. I'll just scroll down to the bottom. Lacrosse, 99,000. And then wrestling is 22,000. So, you know, just and anyone that was, can, What will and it what take for us to get to lacrosse's numbers? 99,000, what will it take? Wait, I have a question. Were those statistics from this year? Correct. So, yeah. That's from 1819. So they'll do 1920, okay. you know. Oh. So, so let's I'll, look back. Let's look back four or five years ago and let's see the t t statistics then. Because I bet you we are more on the growing rapid sport. You know, I mean, it is going to, I think there are more things that we can do as a community society, especially the seniors, giving back more, showing our face, faces more, talking to younger girls or being at those like high school or Fargo tournaments and, you know, trying to you know, expand their minds on what the potential is their career can wrestling can give them. But I think wrestling is still on the upscale for women's uh, wrestling. This is, Ali, this is for you, because I don't even have this question down there, but it, it makes sense to, uh, to, to ask this question. What? <laughs> hey, where are you guys? Can you guys hear me, see me? Yeah, I yes. Yes. I can't see you. Hold on. Technical difficulty. I might have to edit this. Where the heck is he? <laughs> You guys can see me. I can't see you. Uh-oh. Uh, no. What do I got to do here? Oh, I can see everyone else, though. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah, I'm going to have to. That yeah, sucks. I'm going to have to edit that out. Anyway, um, Allie, why do you think there's a discrepancy between us and, let's say, lacrosse in terms of numbers? Lacrosse, women lacrosse, high school girls is something like 99,000. And then wrestling's like 20. 22,000 or something like that. Why do you think there's such a, and that's the bottom, the, you know, the top is like track and field with almost like 500,000 participants, high school I, participants. I honestly think it's because of the, uh, I, I mean, now we have like about what, two division one schools that accept uh, women's wrestling. So I think it's just like that, that obstacle that we still have to um, persevere through and it's not going to come easy, but the whole thing with like, you know, with other programs like title, title, whatever that title is, title, title nine. nine. Yeah. And a lot of, I mean, that's the reason why I feel like, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but it's the reason why they want to take programs or they want to add programs. I mean, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I spoke with this, Aaron, maybe you can help me on this. Um, I was talking to Connor about why mm -hmm. they didn't get a women's program. And I thought it'd be mm -hmm. a great place to have a women's program, but it's because of Title IX reasons. And I feel like that's just the, like the obstacles that we have to go through. And, and, t and another reason, I mean, now, although we have a lot of schools popping up and it's actually, we get a lot of recruits. We had like about, I, I'm pretty close to like 15 recruits signed with NJCU for just this season. And that's, pretty good for just our first our first year in but uh, it's just that places are um you know for for women's wrestling it's out of the way now it's i mean now it's like pop getting populated but back then when we, when we were going to school you know we only had like a handful of choices to go to and Although we, we're still limited to those Division One schools, I think once we, you know, break break through and be able to um, participate at all levels, I think we'll see more participation, more numbers. To that point, like when I started coaching women's wrestling, I think there were six or seven, this is like 2004, 2005, six or seven collegiate programs. And now that number, you know, it's like astronomical, it's something like 81 or 82. <laughs> it actually is growing. But going back to what we talked about earlier, for me, I think one of the challenges for us to catch and be the best in the world, catch Japan and be the best in the world on the women's wrestling side is most of those girls that are actually participating in high school don't even know what freestyle wrestling is. 
And a lot of their coaches may or may not know what freestyle wrestling is too. And like, I don't know if it was Jen or Aaron, but a lot of them, once they, you know, they've done their high school career, they may not even ever get to the next level. They may not, and that's, that's normal in all sports. I mean, typically, you know, let's use track and field 400,000. How many of them are gonna do that in actual college? The challenge with them and us is, in my opinion, track and field sports are the same in high school and college and in at the Olympic games. We're wrestling for high school girls and boys. Uh, it changes once you go to the Olympics or the junior worlds or Pan Ams or anything of that nature. Jenna, this question is for you. What is WCAP and how do you qualify? Okay, so WCAP is the Army's world-class athlete program. There are two ways I would say you can qualify to get into the program. One way is you would, if you meet the credentials, which are loosening a bit now, they used to be a little bit tighter and be top three at the senior level. So now they can kind of get accepted into the program if you're top three at the US Open, top three at Olympic, Olympic trials or world team trials. And I would say like for the men, it's always been like top five. And I would say now they're, they're opening it up to make it top five in the country. Um, if you were a junior world team member, if you won Fargo, there's a lot more things if you've done that type of stuff. Um, and so from there, you would contact the coach and they would help, help you submit your packet. And then you could enlist in either active duty army or the National Guard, wherever state that you're from. And then once you go through your basic and AIT, your uh, individual training for your job, your MOS job, uh, you'd be sent right to WCAP. So that's one way. Another way, uh, which is how my coach entered the program, Jermaine Hodge, he was a Greco number two on the ladder. So he wrestled in high school and college, joined the army. And then as he was over stationed in Korea, he was uh, entering these wrestling tournaments and beating up on these guys. And he was doing it to keep out of trouble in Korea. And from there, one of the commanders saw that he was a wrestler, told him about the world-class athlete program and told him to submit an all army packet. And from there, that all army packet is so that you can compete on the at the camp and the and the tournament for armed forces. And so you basically earn your keep. If you come for armed forces and they you show a lot of potential, they'll keep you another month. And then if you qualify for uh, if you go to the open, qualify for trials, you'll stay through. So if you come through that all army route, and as long as you uh, you get a few months in the program and then you meet the credentials then you could be accepted into that world-class athlete program. Aaron, this is for you. What is the USOTC and how do you qualify for that program? The United States Olympic Training Center. Um, I would, I would say there's a different ways you, you could qualify being there. Um, I would say one of the main ways would be actually going to camps like the national team camps even if you aren't national team or you know if you are sponsored being able to participate show face and and you know actually you know be a partner for some of the best would be a start if you are able to and then actually going to the big events depending if you are a junior or senior level athlete if it is uh junior nationals u23s or uh, senior nationals, world team trials, Olympic team trials, and placing within the top 10 there. Okay, Allie, this question is for you. And it's, this is, I guess all of these are your opinions, uh, but tell me what you think. Do you believe the US OTC or WCAP is suitable for high school graduates or high school students? Um, that's a great question. I mean, I don't wanna, I don't want to offend anybody either in, in saying this, but I, I feel like you should go through the through the ladder, go through the experience of college, wrestle in college, get your time in it, in that freestyle level. I mean, because it's getting very competitive at the college level in itself. And then, and I, I got to quote what like Iris Smith said when uh, she, when I was interested, like kind of, it's not a developing type of, program you know you sh you're already the best you know um i mean they love to have um training partners but I, I i personally like agree with her like i feel like you should take the time and go through the process you know go through go through the beatings go through the victories and then um eventually you know if you want to really you know and and this is like something that it's it's a job. It's a job as well. It's it's part of the army. You know, you get to serve and represent. And you know, you 
you want to be that person that's going to be willing to do both of it. So it has to be a, a decision that you have to think through. And that's my personal opinion. Well, that just about wraps up everything. Ladies, you have anything else to add to this discussion? Thank you, Chan, for having us. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining Growing Women's Wrestling, episode number one.